morning. Can you hear me? Good. Now I want to share something about current affairs. But that's not my title. My title is Blessed Hope. We all need to have a blessed hope. What is our blessed hope? For the imminent return of Jesus Christ. Every Christian must have that hope. Because in the days of Peter, they had had hope. And then scoffers and mockers came and said, Where is the return of the Lord? But it's 2,000 years past now. And to still today, we still must hold on to that blessed hope because it is getting nearer than Peter's day. How many of you believe that Jesus will return? Yes. Of course. If we are Christians, we have to believe it because the Bible says so. But what I want to share this morning is blessed hope, but I want to tie it in with current affairs so that you know exactly where we're at. Let me read what Jesus said in Matthew 24, 3 and 4. 3 to 7, sorry. Now as he sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately saying, Tell us when will these things be? And what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? Now this is the disciples asking him. And Jesus said to them, Take heed that no one deceives you. There's a lot of deception going on. Oh, Christ has come. And all the JWs, they went to meet Christ and Christ didn't come. They got out of their jobs. They got out of everything, schools, universities, and went to meet Christ. It never happened. That was in the 40s. So these are the deceptions that will keep coming. For many will come in my name saying also, I am the Christ and will deceive many. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars which we have gone through and experiencing one right at this moment. See that you are not troubled. You see, whatever happens in the world, whatever wars or rumors of wars are going on, we should not be troubled because these are the signs of times that God has declared in His Word. For all these things must come to pass. All these things must happen. This is what Jesus is saying. And then he concluded, But the end is not yet. We have not reached the end yet. For nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in various places. That's not new, is it? We've been through all of that throughout the years, one decade. Pestilences. They're coming and going like nobody's business. So when we look at all this, what Jesus has said to us from his word, we know that we are living in the last days. All these things will happen, Jesus said, but the end is not yet. The end is not yet. So we've got to have that blessed hope that God is coming to redeem us before it gets worse. I'm just talking and picturing the prophetic calendar of God through His Word. Nothing to do with politics or anything like that. So if you, that's what Jesus said. Keep in mind that the end has not yet. Now when we look at Thessalonians, we all should know when Paul encourages the body of Christ, that he will come. And how will he come? In Thessalonians 4, 17, we read, no, 16, For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And thus we shall always be with the Lord. And then he concluded, Paul, therefore comfort one another with these words. Never ever forget these words. This is what he's trying to tell us. Comfort. Tell each other. Encourage each other that he is coming back. 
And he's coming back for his bride, the church. Everyone who believes in the Lord Jesus Christ. This is what's going to happen. That's called the rapture. So that's the blessed hope we all need to have. But when you look at the conditions of the world and current affairs in the world, the time we can look, it's getting nearer. Nearer and nearer and nearer. Let me give you a little example. Many of you heard this before. The 70 weeks in Daniel. I just want to show you very briefly the time factor. But I'm not quoting, this is right. I'm just saying the time factor, the signs of times, the times of the last days. I want to show you how much time we have left approximately. Because the Bible says Jesus doesn't know when he's coming back, only the Father knows. But now when you look at the signs of time, but Jesus also taught his disciples, look up in the heavens what's going on. Look on the earth what's going on. But the end is not yet. This is what he's saying. So when we look at Daniel chapter 9, about the 70 weeks, what is God saying in this prophecy? God is saying, I am going to deal with Israel for another 70 weeks. This is what he's saying. But this 70 week in Daniel does not mean a week of seven days. Shabuah in Hebrew, there's a week of seven days and a week of seven years in Hebrew's calendar. So this is talking 70 times 7, 490. God is saying in Daniel chapter 9, I will deal with Israel for another 490 years. And this is what God is saying. And if you read Daniel chapter 9, you will know what I'm talking about. But how do these weeks work? If you read Daniel, he, he tells you, he divides those weeks. One week then 68, altogether 69 weeks have gone. I'm, I'm telling you very briefly because I don't have much time to, to go through it all. 69 weeks have already passed. How do we know? Because it tells you when the week starts, rebuilding of the walls of Nehemiah in Jerusalem. If you read the book of Nehemiah, you will know what I'm talking about. The walls of Jerusalem got to be rebuilt. And Nehemiah rebuilt his walls in 445 BC. So when you, when you look at the calendar, it started in Nisan, March, 445 BC. To briefly cut it out, to, to, to cut the long story short, from first week to the 69th week, that's what happened in Daniel 9, accordingly God divided. Daniel's prophecy was divided. First week, rebuilding of the walls. Then the rest of the weeks, it's all about Jesus and He's bringing in His kingdom, everlasting kingdom, that there be desolation on the earth. All this tribulation will take place. All of that. So what I'm trying to say is 69 weeks have already passed. Now, the 70 week has not come. This is what Jesus said. All these things are happening, but the end is not yet. The end is not yet. So when you calculate March 445 BC right down to the 69th week, it ends in 6 April AD 32. How do you get that? Sir Robert Anderson, one of the Bible scholars, he counted all the days of the 69 weeks, which is 483 years. He counted 173,880 days. So starting from the month of Nisan, March 445 BC, counting all these days, 173,880 days, right down, it comes to AD 32. What happens at AD 32? Jesus died on the cross. He was cut off. Jesus was cut off at the cross. If that's the word. So when you look at the 69th week, it ended at the cross. Now dispensational theology teaches us that there's a gap in between the 69 week and the 70 week. There's a gap. It's called a parenthesis. If you, if you study dispensations, there are many dispensations, about six or seven, I'm not sure, because every dispensation is 2,000. So the earth is not millions of years old. From Genesis, first dispensation, right through today, 
about seven dispensation, if you like. That's what, 14,000 years. People are saying, you know, they're all guessing. Even carbon dating and fossils, if they try to study it, scientific, scientists try to study it clearly and precisely, the world's not a million of years old. Not at all. Okay, I get distracted a little bit, but what I'm trying to say here is there's a gap between 69 weeks and 70 weeks. The 70 week begins at the tribulation period. We all know that tribulation is coming. The seven year period of tribulation, the last week. So dispensational theology teaches there's a gap, there's a parenthesis in between of 2,000 years. So when the 69 week ended at AD 32, if you add 2,000, it's 2032. How far off are we from here now? Nine years? But don't quote me on that, that Jesus is coming back on that day. No, I'm not saying that at all. I'm saying the time is getting nearer. If you look at the current affairs, if you look at the signs of times, and if you look at what Bible teaches, approximately, it's going to be in the 2030s. So do we don't have time, church. My point here is not arguing, not complaining, not fighting, not warring, not having contentions and schisms, but out there people are dying spiritually. And we have a responsibility to go out there to tell them about Jesus. To win many souls as much as we can before the last week is displayed. This is our responsibility. This is what we've got to be praying for. This is what we've got to act on. Spreading the good news, the word of God, before Jesus returns. That's what we've got to be focusing on. Not on ourselves, not on our church only, not on each other, but on those out there. Because we are called as witnesses. We have the great commission. So I have established, okay, 2032, according to Daniel 70 week prophecy. Daniel 9. Read it. We don't have a lot of time, church. If Jesus tarries, so be it. But if he doesn't tarry, hey, we don't have a lot of time. We've got to work harder to win people out there who are lost. You know... It is worse for somebody not knowing Jesus and going to hell than a hostage caught or killed by Hamas. It is so important that the people in the world needs to know that time is running out. And we have a responsibility to tell them that Jesus is Lord. Jesus gives eternal life. Jesus saves. And only Jesus can free us from the bondage of sin and have eternal life. That is vitally important for the ministry of the church. And I believe everyone should be participating in that. Reaching out, telling the good news to people. Church needs to be prepared, equipped for ministry. The most important task for the church, equipping the saints for the ministry to go out and to preach the gospel. Now let me look at the current affair at the moment. Everyone's following the news. Everyone knows what happened to Israel and what happened to the Palestinians and what happened to Hamas. We all know, and all the neighboring countries, Saudi, Jordan, Egypt, Lebanon, they all involved. I'm not talking about politics getting involved there. I'm talking about biblical prophecy. Biblical prophecy. Now it's good to see America, Biden going, Sunak going, and all the others are supporting. And they were all standing with Israel. How many of you know that Great Britain has its cups? Great Britain, the symbol of Great Britain is lion. How many of you know that? It's lion. Lion the cups mean whoever went out from Great Britain to Australia, a Pommies prisoner, 
you know, Mother, Mother England, prisoners of Mother England, they all call that POMs. So they are there in Australia, some went to South Africa, some to America, some to Canada. All these are col colonial, you know, empires that branch out from the lion, the cubs. Now let me read Ezekiel 38. All these cups are supporting Israel. Why? Because it's God's nation. It's God's people, regardless of their faults, regardless of their rebellious nature against God. Rebell rebelling that they don't want to know God. They only know the God of Abraham. They, they rejected Jesus. They had to pay a lot of consequences in the years. The Holocaust. These are consequences. Jews were spread all over the world. The Bible prophesied they all come back and have their own nation, and they did. All these are fulfillment of prophecies. Now, I'm to, I want to talk about the current affairs that who supports Israel. Let's read Ezekiel 38, a few verses. Verse 10. Let me paint you a picture. This is talking about the far north, the bear from far north which means USSR before Russia. You know, the descendants of Russia is the, the Noah's grandsons. Russians are the descendants of Noah's grandson. Noah's grandson went far, far off to the north, went down to the south. They all went each way in, from the Middle East. And now we have different states through their grandson, his grandsons. So, Russia is one of his grandsons, descendants of one of his grandsons who went far north. And this is what God is saying. And then they rebel against God, they have other gods and all that, the consequences are here. Ezekiel 38 verse 10, Thus says the Lord God, on that day, on that day, this is talking about the Third World War by the way, okay? This is talking, talking about the Third World War which is yet to come, going to come. Thus says the Lord God, on that day it shall come to pass that thoughts will arise in your mind and you will make an evil plan. This is talking about the far north, the bear from the north which represents Russia. And he says, one day, the day will come that you're in your thoughts you will arise in your mind and you will make an evil plan. What are the evil plans that Russia already had made? Afghanistan, Iraq, Crimea, Ukraine, Holies. It's all written. But Russia has a purpose. Russia is not rich in grain or food. Because that is the consequence of what curse. The ground is cursed. No matter how much they sow, they don't reap. That's why Russia needs grain, food. This is just Ukraine is full of food. One thing. Okay, to take... You will say, I will go up against a land of unwalled villages. At the moment, you know, peace comes after a war. So the wars that have been passed, gone with Israel, the Middle East, is not as escalating as as bad as this one now. Because all the neighboring countries want Israel out of the planet. Because it's God's nation, God's people, they don't want it. They want to wipe all of them out. That's the idea. But yet, now this war has occurred. Now they are having peace talks everywhere. Okay? Now, when this peace is attained, that means the walls will come down. Israel will be at peace with its five neighboring countries. Maybe when Hamas is wiped out, when Hezbollah is wiped out, then the neighboring countries will be at peace with Israel. That's what it means when you say, I will go up against a land of unwalled villages. That means cities or towns. I will go to a peaceful people. A peaceful people who dwell safely. All of them dwelling without walls and having neither bars nor gates. This is talking about Israel, Ezekiel, in this prophecy. And then, for what? To take plunder and to take booty, to stretch out your hand against the waste places that are again inhabited. Israel was a waste place before. And when they all came back, it was inhabited. And against the people gathered from the nations, like I said, they were all spread out at the Holocaust. And then they all came back. 
who have acquired livestock and goods who dwell in the midst of the land. Now Israel is quite wealthy and blessed. The irritation system, everything in the desert is blooming. The scientists, they got the best scientists from Israel. People are so educated, so knowledgeable. So a lot of geniuses come from Israel because they are God's people. So here Ezekiel is prophesying, when my nation brought back from all the other nations, having all these waste places inhabited again and dwelling in peace, you shall think and you will take plunder from the north. Russian, Russia invading countries is not surprising, is it? No. This is talking about the Russian invasion. It's coming. You know why? Bethlehem, the name Bethlehem is called a food basket. There's so much of food there. Now, verse 13, Sheban and Dedan, the merchant of Tarshish, the colonial empires, which is the lion and the cups, and, says, and all their young lions will say to you, have you come to take plunder? Have you gathered your army to take booty, to carry away silver and gold, to take away livestock and goods, to take great plunder? Hey, this is all prophesied here. And it's all going to happen pretty soon. When Russia comes down to invade Israel because of food and also the strategic, really middle of the world. When one sits on that strategic middle of the world strategy, it can conquer a lot of nations. Look at the other five countries. They're all under Russia anyway. They were given Iraq, Afghanistan, Lebanon, Egypt. You know, they're allies of Russia. So this is going to take place, church. Who will support? This is what I'm on about. Sheban, Dedan, and the merchants of Tarshish. The lion and the cubs. They are all supporting Israel. What's my point? Today, today, it has created a war. Killed thousands of innocent people. Wars always does. But there will be peace. And when that peace happens, they are having talks now. And when that peace happens, watch out. The third world war is going to happen. And if you read Ezekiel 38, 39, God is going to wipe out Israel, or Russia, within one day. Within one day. He will send a great earthquake. All their nuclear warfare weapons will all blow up and Russia will be no more. And that's what the Bible is saying. And we need to understand, we need to have a grip of what the end times affairs are. And when you look at Israel, always look at Israel. That is the place where everything is going to begin. So whatever is going on today, we have a knowledge of what God's plans are and what God is going to do. He always have the final say. He always have the final say. Russia is going to be wiped out in one day. God's still going to protect Israel. All of it. And then the tribulation period will start. Seven years. At the end of it all, Christ will come back with his saints. That's a prophetic calendar. He lands his feet on Mount Olive, Zechariah 14. It splits into two, creating a big valley called Megiddo. And there, the battle will begin with Christ and his saints and all the people who are against Christ. And there'll be a blood bath of 185 miles long and five feet deep, a river of blood. That's how bad it's going to be. I'm just painting you a brief picture of end time entails. But my encouragement is, as we know, as we know the current affairs and what's happening and who's supporting Israel and the time of Jesus coming back, that blessed hope, we can, we can look at it up in an approximate way, how much time we have. Make use of whatever time you have for the Lord Jesus Christ. Because soon we will be with Him. We'll be caught up in the air with Him and be with Him forever. Isn't that a great thing? You don't sound very convincing. Isn't that a great thing? 
better than here on earth struggling every day with aches and pains and moans and grains and all sorts better having an eternal life with Jesus forever and ever and ever we have this blessed hope don't lose that hope keep watching the current affairs keep watching what's happening in the world keep meditating and focusing on Israel and what's going on there God always has his way and he always will protect his people and his church. Amen.